Yeah, so the origin story of the office. Maxine Adams, who is the executive director of the Lakes Region Arts Council, called me and said, I'm coming down to the cities, I wanna to talk to you about something. And, and she came to visit and she said, there's a space open in our building. Don't you wanna start a, a springboard satellite office <laughs> in Fergus Falls? She and kinda said it as a joke. Well, I, no, she was very serious about it, uh, but I, I just said, sure. <laughs> that sounds fun. From that time when Maxine came to ask me that question, less than a year later, we had the office open and up and running. <laughs> and honestly, in the moment, like none of the sort of probably questions that you should ask in that moment about like budget and scope and sustainability, or like any of those things that of course people ask me a lot about now, um, I just said, sure, why not? We've got a guest today that they're today from Springboard for the Arts, and I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. I know first names, but that's all. So, Yeah, uh, my name is Michelle Anderson, and I'm the Rural Program Director at Springboard for the Arts. My name is Naomi Sleishman, and I am the Artist Development Coordinator for Springboard for the Arts. Now, this is really a cool, cool organization, and I don't think people know a lot about it. We're based both in St. Paul and Fergus Falls, and we're an economic and community development organization for artists. And our mission is to cultivate vibrant communities by connecting artists with the resources and skills they need to make a living and a life. Um, we opened our Fergus Falls office in 2011, and we, uh, we do a, a lot of programs, but um, our kind of core programming has to do with helping artists navigate um, the, all of the, the things that you need to, um, to run a business as an artist, to make money, to price your work, and to market yourselves. I, I'm curious to know how the two of you came to Springboard. <laughs> Those are both really good stories. <laughs> Dropped out of the clouds. <laughs> okay, we've um, got about five uh, minutes. Yeah, so a short version. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell the short version, but if you want the long version, come visit us. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was living in Portland, Oregon for about 11 years, but I'm originally from southeast Minnesota, and I just missed Minnesota, and I was tired of the city. And then the springboard job to start this office um, popped up one day, and my heart started pounding, and I applied, and I moved here a few months oh, later great. on my own. That's so. great. Yay. And <laughs> I'm originally from Fergus Falls, okay. raised here, uh, and I moved away for 11 years, uh, went on to college, and decided to come back to my community because I have been a, uh, an artist in this community of Fergus Falls and had great support. Um, Mr. Blondo was one of my big supporters sure. from the high school, a great person and a wonderful artist himself. Um, and decided that I wanted to move back home and be with my family and also uh, work on my art as, as I'm an artist myself. And so came back here and uh, went into Lake Region Arts Council, told them I was back, talked to Maxine Adams, and then I found Michelle, who was next door <laughs> um, in the Springboard <laughs> office. Um, and we just started talking and started collaborating um, on work, and that's how the story began with me it sounds like you go away for 11 years. I yeah, that's, 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 that's the that's secret thing. formula. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go away for 11 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I remember meeting Naomi and just knowing that it was only a matter of time before we found a way to hire her because um, I really wanted a collaborator that, um, that had kind of the same optimism about rural communities as I did, and she was, okay. she was that. I got prairie, prairie dreams in central Minnesota, yeah. you say jump in a lake, I'll do it anyway. Never felt better. He's caterwauling bugaboos and take a step from these here shoes in central Minnesota, yeah. In Fergus, Fergus Falls, my. 
13,000 neighbors on a party line. Get them all together, they'll shoot the shot. You won't go guessing anymore in a Fergus, Fergus Falls of Mine. Apart. I got long grass prairie dreams growing on my heart. You might prefer when the sun don't shine, but we got prairie dreams inside. We got prairie, prairie dreams apart. We got prairie, prairie dreams apart. I think the really cool thing about Springboard is that they have two locations, one in Fergus Falls and one in St. Paul, and they both feel like totally different companies and totally different places because each one builds off the community around it, which is kind of the big picture about Springboard is that they're, they focus on making communities and making communities aware of the arts and all communities have art. In fact, everyone in a community does some kind of art. If you run a drugstore, you're an artist. If you make paintings, you're an artist. Everything from crafts to managers are artists because somehow that connects to art. Somehow art is not just a little cartoon man in a beret. I'm the uh manager of Partnership for Health and so our program is all about uh, trying to make the healthy choice the easy choice through policy system and environmental changes with the communities. You know combining arts with preventative health wasn't really the first thing that was on my mind when I'm doing my work um, but uh, we had the the great um, blessing of having this relationship blossom with Springboard for the Arts and now that we've had this relationship going and doing wonderful projects together, I can't see us doing it without it. Because every time we do some type of strategy that we work on, we work in many different areas, work sites, schools, communities, healthcare. I'm always thinking now, um, how might the arts be incorporated into this work? I, you know, I, I work a lot with Lake Region Takes Root Community Garden. And so we are starting to incorporate the arts out there. and. There's also some like real functional things that the arts actually serve. Like for instance, um, th we had a group that worked with kids at the farmers market developing wind chimes. Okay, so these kids put together all these little cute little items and tied them all together, and now they're wind chimes and they're put out the art out at the community garden, and they're something that you can enjoy. Obviously, aesthetically pleasing when you come and you can hear the wind make these wonderful sounds but they also chase away our deer and keep our deer away. having Springboard in Fergus change things for you? Knowing more about grant writing, number one. It's approachable, the people are approachable, helpful, um, it's not complicated, you know. I need things not to be complicated. <laughs> I kind of just need somebody to walk me through stuff. Yeah. Like, not, not so much, obviously, the creative process, but all the other stuff, all the, yeah. 
um, whether it's, you know, I think that people don't realize when they're young and they want to be an artist that there's things like legal things and copyrights and all of that, you know, taxes and all of that stuff that's important, you know, it, yeah. along with the grant writing, you have all these other things that you don't just go out there and paint. Your art makes me feel happy. I'll, I give a lot of kudos to Springboard for the Arts for setting up a office in Fergus Falls. I believe it's their first uh, outstate or greater Minnesota office outside of the Twin Cities. And a lot of their work is to um, legitimize or help in the business aspect for artists. I mean, they help uh, so ar artists can actually make a living uh, doing art. And so they help in a lot of practical applications through insurance and I think through filling out grants and um, you know these practical aspects of the business world that you have to get involved in. I mean, if you want to survive, you, get, you have to learn how to you know, write, out, write a grant and, and get insurance and um, you know, fill out forms and taxes and so forth and so on. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. So, and I think uh, Michelle Anderson is, um, you know, in, in her own quiet way, she already in just a few years uh, has established herself in the community. And I think a large part of that is that they're able to secure uh, pretty significant chunks of funding, like through the Kirkbride Arts and History Weekend. Um, so when you, once you start kind of talking about money and, and securing grants and... Um, then people will listen a, a little bit more. Because again, Fergus Falls is a practical community and money does talk. sort of thing often where you go to a place to just be yeah be Michelle <laughs> yeah um, I tend to go to a lot of these little meetings um, where people just are starting like a, an organizing process in this case it's um, I think a newly formed arts advisory council like to the city all that I know is that they've been talking about doing some more public art in town here Maxine from the Arts Council recommended that I come and talk at their meeting. We're, we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel here and we're just trying mm -hmm. to uh, move up that ladder and learn and, and trying to create something mm -hmm. that the uh, city can accept. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I think the question is always whether um, where the arts can help the city meet its potential. So for some communities, it's about the physical landscape, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and that's definitely a draw. If you're looking to kind of generate tourism and stuff, then maybe the big thing to focus on is public art. But in other communities, and I know this has been really true in Fergus Falls, it's been more about kind of the social fabric and how the arts can help people get to know each other better and help different generations interact. Um, and I know that has been kind of the most important part of um, our work there. We would like to have um, a backdrop other than just our stores, but to support our stores where people come to town and they say, wow, great shops, beautiful town. Mm -hmm. We don't really have that right now. So is there a place that you all can think of that is ripe for a piece of public art that you would be like, oh my gosh, if we did a call for art, and just got proposals from artists in the region. Um, is there a place that you kind of 
that comes to mind right away? Well, there is right across from the gas station with some kind of a sculpture or something. Mm -hmm. Or even area. like an amphitheater. The, the key is to kind of think about what's the focus. Is it, because um, you can have just endless ideas and you can even take the same arts approach to all of those ideas. So the question is really more about what, what do you hope like comes out of a, a large arts project? Is it a, a more vibrant downtown? Is it a better understanding of the community's history, both by locals and others? And even though you would probably end up with all of those goals in the end, it's like starting kind of with that one goal is really, really key and getting on kind of on the same page, both as this group, but also kind of getting out and talking to people. It was a really good conversation. Naomi and I both go into those meetings just having huge expectations for ourselves when really all people need is to vent about something. A lot of the people that come to us come to us because they're so frustrated. Frustrated with all kinds of things. They're um, like this guy was frustrated with paperwork. <laughs> right. Or, or they're frustrated with the money from the arts board always going to urban artists. I think something that I love about working at Springboard is that we try to bring optimism to every situation in a world that's just always saying no or always wants to know how much money something's going to cost. It's just starting with like, yes, let's try something. I, I need these drives and I just can't really imagine doing this work in a place where I don't get to have a nice long drive afterwards. When you're a sounding board for, for new ideas and you, and you want to kind of cheer people along and you want to help them get started, it's, it's a really fun part of the job. But if you're an introvert, it can take a lot out of you because you're giving a lot in that process um, just by the act of listening and the act of kind of helping people take their first steps. Be like, oh, what? <gasps> Number three? I was hoping. <laughs> Isn't this a great example of what we're talking about? This is what they have done. This building belongs to Fergus. Fergus belongs to this building, and that's what, what they brought up. Hey, you guys, you can't tear this down. You can't ignore it. This is what, okay, I said this again. I like to repeat myself. This is what Springboard for the Arts does, did to this community. We still don't know the fate of that building. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, if it's going to get saved. But I think that uh, Michelle and Naomi and Springboard for the Arts have given people a lot more reasons to care about that building. They have uh, focused a lot more community attention on that building. 
Uh, they've been very creative in, in triggering new ways for people to think about the building. You know, I'm friends with Michelle on Facebook and sometimes Michelle has commented on Facebook. Uh, I wonder if the, the public identity or the public image of Springboard for the Arts within the community of Fergus Falls is sometimes too closely connected to the Kirkbride, uh, that maybe the Kirkbride somehow dominates our image uh, or what people think of when they think of Springboard for the Arts. Uh, I, my answer to that is, if that is the case, so be it. Through this, we have been able to uh, offer uh, great resources for artists to continue to work with us when they're done with their residency program. Christina Estelle was here uh, for our second session last year and actually did a huge installation on the outside of the Kirkbride building where she hung up curtains on one of the rotundas. And she got to document that. And uh, this year, she's actually one of the McKnight Fellowship winners. Not only that, for one of her public outreach programs, we got to go inside the Kirkbride building. She took actual castings from the architecture inside the historical building, did a workshop which was open to the public where they could come in and do a casting workshop with her and take a piece of history home with them. I also was very interested in the gal that made molds of the various places mm -hmm. in the Kirkbride. Yeah. And I attended those classes and made a mold, which I haven't completed yet. <laughs> and I it's I still have to paint it. Its title is Jean. Mind the rain, mind the rain, or the rolling tree, or the rolling tree, the weary night, the weary night, never worries me, never worries me, just give me wings, just give me wings. The great things about working with Springboard as artists coming into the community, we're not from the community, right? So we come in and having a community organization that can really help us connect deeply and quickly with the right people. Uh, and it was obvious that Springboard had spent the time laying the groundwork to build a lot of, they have built a lot of trust already. And I think having Springboard in Fergus Falls as a, as a primer for artists, like there's already this this surface level by which we can come in and, and, and paint over and it's already primed or ready ready for the art to come and, and lay on top of it so that it, it, there isn't so many surprises when you walk up to somebody on the street and say hi I'm an artist working on this project and they're like wh why here why me why now it's more like oh a springboard <laughs> it's like yeah right exactly so there's you know there's uh there's an instant, an instant connection to the community as artists coming in, because so many of us that do regional work, um, one of the fears is, you know, had, or, or one of the hurdles is overcoming the outsider coming in syndrome, which is like, I'm gonna come do this to you. I think Springboard has helped, helped um, folks who maybe don't necessarily identify as, as artists or art supporters to um, understand what the process of, the creative process is about, and so that they can plug in where they feel comfortable and know that you know this is something that we're doing together and it's not again just an artist coming in and doing something to them but it's doing something with them There's a really deep cultural story to be told in rural America. And the way that story is told, the way that we think about the stakes of that story, is constantly being revised by the people that are in those places who are thinking through those questions themselves on the ground. And I think Springboard is one of just the preeminent spaces for that work in rural America. There's like an underground river that Springboard and their collaborators and their communities are really sensitive to, and it is 
it's to be found kind of at this intersection of this is our lived everyday experience in a place. And we value that. That is the foundation for why we're here and why we would want to make work. And we can bring artists into that conversation. And the artists kind of have a little bit of the divining rod to show us the angle to our everyday life that maybe we're not considering. You know, there, there's a lot of emphasis in creative placemaking um, on the product. How do we measure this product? How do we, how, how do we measure, how do we understand uh, the effectiveness, the success of uh, X, Y, or Z? Uh, project. And I feel with Springboard's work in Fergus Falls that, you know, we can arrive at those illuminations, things that can be measured, um, ways to sort of uh, analyze and look at the success of a project, but it's all about the process. artists make a living and a life. <laughs> 